So good evening, everyone, to the IGTC PGPBA Convocation Ceremony for Batch 2017-2019. A very, very warm welcome to everyone. And uh, I hope you like the performance, because it's something very different that we tried before. And on this note, I would want to invite uh, our president of the Indo-German Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Sunil Mathur, uh, to give his welcome address. Good evening, everyone. Getting up here was like navigating my own company through hoops and through a dark curtain over there where you didn't know what was coming out at the other end. But um, it's a delight to be over here. That first session was really amazing. Um, it's very interesting how you are able to put things together and you leave it to the imagination of the audience to try and figure out what the hell's going on. And initially when you start, you're not quite sure what exactly is going on. Over a period of time, uh, the story actually grows on you and you become a part of this. And in, in real life, that is, that is also what happens. Um, but let's take a step back. 1991 was the first batch of the IGTC, right, Radhika? So we are now talking about uh, 20... No, I won't fall in. Um, <laughs> there are enough pits for me to fall in, but I won't want fall into that one. It's pretty deep down there. Yeah, it's very deep. Um, 1991 was the first IGTC session. Um, and I think it was, uh, the first batch was about 20 students from Siemens, uh, headed by a general manager of Siemens, uh, who was actually wanting to introduce the dual vocational training program. This was a unique concept at that time, and believe it or not, it's still a unique concept 30 years later, um, where you combine education and the academic part of it uh, really with, with real life experiences and real life uh, practice. Um, I wish really that there would be more programs of this kind because our country in particular has developed a disconnect between what is taught in the classrooms and what is really happening in business. And I think what the IGTC has been able to achieve over the last 29 years has really been this terrific connect to bring uh, real life situations in the workplace here to you in your classrooms. Um, over the last 29 years, from, from a Siemens perspective, we've had over 70 graduates uh, coming. Uh, a lot of them today are in very senior positions in our organization. Um, two of them are CFOs of our largest uh, businesses in the country. One of them is our deputy head of strategy. Um, and we, although the program started off initially as um, a finance program and developed from there, I think today you are covering not only finance, but marketing and sales and a lot of other areas, which in a way is a benchmark around the country because um, there are no other programs that I know of that bring this very close connect between real life industry and academia. Uh, this is a discussion that is going on in government. Many of us are already interacting with government to try and see how can we bring academia closer uh, to the workplace and vice versa. Uh, the connects that are created through that are absolutely priceless because it is a proven fact. And I think the IGTC graduates are a testimony to that. Um, one of the biggest prides I think that the IGTC has, has just now Bernard been appointed as the Lufthansa CEO in India. And he was an IGTC graduate. So, I mean, it just shows what the potential is because of this terrific uh, connect uh, between industry and the workplace. So over a period of time, this has evolved from being a pure finance to marketing, sales, and so on. 
and I'm sure that this is going to graduate beyond that. But for those of you who have just uh, graduated or will graduate today, I'd like to leave you with maybe three or four of my own personal learnings. And um, Radhika wrote in three mails to me, don't talk theory, talk something personal about yourself as well. Um, so I've got to listen to the teacher. Um, the first one for me was, you can't plan your career. You really can't plan your career. I think for those of us who have been in leadership positions and are in leadership positions, many of us could never have mapped at the stage of life that you are in, uh, indeed, a couple of years beyond that, that we would be where we are, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, very often, what evolves is much different and much better than what you could have planned for yourselves in any case. And uh, particularly for me, that is, that is true. I never planned to be the CFO of Siemens India. I never planned and could never have planned to be the CEO of Siemens India. But events happen, and um, you need a lot of things to come together for things like that to happen. But eventually, you just can't plan your careers. What you can plan, and this is the second point, is to ensure that you do 10% differently from what everyone else would be doing. 90% of the people will be doing exactly what you're doing. So how do you differentiate and how does the management differentiate in a large organization between those who are great performers and those who are absolutely fantastic performers? And it is usually that 10% additional that counts. So when you are out there in the workplace, please look for what is that 10% additional that will put you and differentiate you from the rest of your colleagues in the organization. The third learning for me is that being ethical leads to a sustainable career. Whatever you do, unless it is ethical, it will never be long term. There will be short term gains to be derived, most definitely. But you will never know when those short term gains can stop. Because there is always a sword hanging over your head. And if you are not clean in your dealings, you are not clean in the way you interact, then you will be perceived to be not clean. And there is a point in time that things will come back and your career falls short. So it makes business sense, it makes career sense, it makes personal sense to ensure and to drive in the most difficult of, of situations being absolutely ethical. Absolutely ethical. You will come across crossroads throughout your life. At every point in time, there will be the easy road and there will be the unroad, unknown road and the more difficult road. The weaklings take the easy road. Those that will survive and will lead their organizations will be those who will take the untrodden path. And I think that is proven throughout the world today. This is not an Indian one. And lastly, from my side, Teamwork is going to be the absolute critical, fundamental part of your career growth. You will only be as effective as the team that you are working in and as the weakest link in that team. Uh, it is very clear, none of us in the leadership positions are super brilliant. None of us in leadership uh, positions have got anything special from anybody else. What we do do is we hire people that challenge us. We do not hire people to tell them what to do. We hire people so that they can tell us what to do. 
And that means they've got to be smarter than us. And that means when we work in a team of people that are much smarter than we are, then that lifts us to the next level, pushes us to the next level, drives us to the next level. And that's how you move forward. You never move forward on your own. You always move forward in the team and with the teams that you work in and the teams that you build around you. So I thought I'd just leave these four learnings from my own life uh, to all of you for whatever it's worth. Some of you may find it useful, but I think it is important to keep those learnings at the back of your mind. Um, you start on a career uh, and a next phase in your lives. Treat this moment today with utmost treasure. You will never come back to it. The experiences that you have had here, the experiences that you face today, the network that you have built up between you is something that can be with you for the rest of your lives. So all the very best, and Godspeed to all of you. Bye. Thank you so much, Mr. Mathur.